So what I'll present is a couple of caching strategies for specifically for personalized content in an e-commerce strategy. Uh, hi, I'm Thais. I'm uh, the technical evangelist here at Varnish Software. And uh, the image I used uh, as, uh, as sort of the intro slide has a strong reference to what we're going to do. Now, in an e-commerce context, there's typically two things you, that's, that are going to be visualized in a, in a personal way. That's your login information. In this case, hello, my name is Thais Ferin, and probably also the number of items that you have stored in cash. Now, when we talk about personalized data from an HTTP perspective, that uh, if it's uh, shielded content, well, then you probably have authorization headers to identify you as a user. But if it's just uh, session management, then we'll use cookies for that. And uh, that's a bit of a problem because these things are specifically built for your eyes only. So if you have a cookie, the value of that cookie will either be used literally in the content or will be used to identify you on the system. So in, in theory, you can't cache because it's very personal. If I would cache the shopping cart for everyone, then maybe I would be logged in with taste and I would have one item in, in, in my shopping cart. Well, then everyone would see taste and one item in shopping cart. So that's a no-go. So here you see the typical stuff that, uh, that we use hole punching techniques for. Uh, we've talked about these. Uh, Ajax is a popular one, but ESI, edge side includes, is another popular one. I won't be talking about that uh, as, uh, as Ariana mentioned, I'm going to talk about edge stash, which is a, which is a different matter. Now, uh, the cookies I'll be talking about, this is uh, an example of my personal cookie settings for a specific website. So most of it is garbage and it's just tracking cookies to track your behavior, but I've marked the one in red that would be relevant for us. So as soon as you drop something in the shopping cart, we need to establish a session. This is done on the server side, but the cookie, the session cookie has an identifier and that identifies me at the server level. Now, the goal today is, uh, because normally we would say, as soon as we have this sort of uh, cookie, we won't cache. Or if we use placeholders like ESI, we only cache that block and the rest won't be cached. Today, we're gonna leverage Varnish more as an HTTP logic box and make more decisions on the edge. Now, you've seen this before. This is uh, Ariana has, has showed it from an e-commerce and an ESI perspective. Well, I just built this uh, really simple proof of concept. It doesn't do much. It only adds stuff to the shopping cart, but I, I didn't see any implementations in the wild. So I built this little POC. Uh, I shouldn't explain what it does. Ariana already hinted towards it. But what happens here is, and maybe I should go back. You see view, uh, sh view shopping cart. You see this label there. In this case, it's one. It could be two, three, four depending on the number of items you have stored in cache. From an HTML perspective, that will be the HTML representation. So you'll see four there, and the goal is to have that value cached, but in such a way that not everyone is seeing the same thing. Now, this session information that is visualized in HTML is also stored on the system. Now, I'm using PHP, which is a very popular programming language for web applications. Uh, this is the way that PHP organizes its sessions. For your language, or your framework, it might be a bit different. So this is a bit garbled content, uh, serialized in a specific proprietary way. But what you can see is that there's this key called items in cart. And then you see semicolon i, i is the data type. It's an, an integer, it's a number, and its value is four. So that's stored in the session mechanism. Could be disk, could be database, could be another uh, piece of information. And our goal today is to access that information from within Varnish. The way this is, is done is as soon as you need session data, the system might uh, throw a file on this called ses and then underscore a unique hash. And that hash is our session identifier will be stored as a cookie. Now, the goal today, and that is what uh, edge stash does, is to replace that number four, which represents at the point of, of where I consult a page number of items in my shopping cart, to actually a placeholder. Now, uh, edge stash, and I will hint towards it right now, edge stash is a varnish module that does mustache processing on the edge. Now, mustache is a very popular templating language that uses these handlebars. These, it looks like a mustache, hence the name, which are curly braces that contain values. And these values are variables that can be replaced. So what I'm doing when I go back is uh, where we have four here, we'll just replace it with a variable called, variable called items in cart. And upon delivery, depending on your session ID, we'll just throw in the value and do this without accessing the origin, because that's the goal. We need to protect the origin system. Now, this is a, a little bit of out of context VCL. Uh, no need to be scared of this. The only thing you need to remember is when we retrieve 
content from the origin in VCL backend response, and when we were about to store it in cache, we can parse the output for these placeholders. So edge stash dot parse response. And that module will identify all the placeholders and will index them for later use. And then the second function, VCL deliver, is where we deliver the content to the user. In some way, shape, or form, we retrieve the session information and get uh, the items in cart. Right now, this is cart.get. I will explain how we get there in a minute. But we get the number of items in the shopping cart for the specific user identified by the session. And if we notice that upon delivery time, we already have for that page an, an edge stash template loaded, we can inject JSON. So all of a sudden, that items in cart variable that was uh, templated will be replaced with the actual value. So this happens on the edge, on the fly. And that allows us to store something that was previously uncacheable, being a very personal piece of shopping cart information into something general and replacing it on the fly. That's the power of it. Unfortunately, when you want to do that, you need to require, if it requires code changes, you need to change the way this is uh, done at the template level or at the code level. And that might prove to be difficult, but we have ways uh, around this. So what if I told you that this replacement of uh, the value for, in this case, with items in cart can be done on the edge, where we can actually inspect the response body and uh, change it on the fly so you don't have to in your application. And that's where another of our uh, proprietary modules uh, in Varnish Enterprise comes into play. It's called XBody, and it allows you to inspect and modify requests and response bodies. And again, some out of context VCL, I've grayed out things you already seen in the edge stash example. But what I highlighted in color is the part where we will actually inject the placeholder. So XBody is a module to inspect and modify the body. And with the rec sub function, we can do a regular expression search. So we can search for a pattern and then substitute it on the fly. So what we're doing here is looking for this span HTML tag that has an ID items in cart and then other data. Then we're looking for a word backslash W asterisk. So that's the value. And then in the end, we have the closing tag. So let me take you back to that. So you can see right here how that is composed. So you see the span, uh, which is an HTML tag uh, that can be annotated with classes and other attributes. Then we have the value, which is group number two. And then we have the closing tag, which is group number three. And that is exactly what we're matching here. And the output is the opening tag, then the hard-coded items in cart, and then the closing tag. And this way, we just injected uh, an edge stash placeholder without changing the origin, which is very convenient. And then it's a matter of uh, accessing session data and varnish using the file system, Redis, or Memcached, or the database, or an API. It depends on what scales well in your organization and how you want to approach it. And I have a, a couple of scenarios, four scenarios to be precise, that leverage both the file system and Redis. And uh, uh, it's demo time right now, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, let's dive right in. Let's close the slides for right now. Uh, Ariana, um, are you still seeing this nicely? I do. OK, good. So uh, this is the, this little proof of concept. I've built this in the Symfony framework in PHP. And as you can see, it's, uh, it runs on a Docker container on my laptop right now. It's on the local host. And the origin system is port forwarded to port 8080. So when I refresh this page, uh, you see the products. I can add products to my shopping cart, and they will be in here. Now, as soon as we do this, we can see that a session cookie has been established. So B, D, E, D. So that long hash is there. And I will, I'll need to take you to this place. On the right, on the left-hand side of the console, you see the logs of my e-commerce solution. So when I refresh the page, you will see things happening here. When I go to sessions, you can see various sessions here. This is also mounted on disk. So this is such a session file. When I open it up, you can really see all the data. It looks a bit in a weird format, but items in cart equals zero for this session. I have multiple sessions on my system. So that's the way we're going to run things. Now, if we want to cache this in Varnish, uh, we're going to use both edge stash, X body, and then a mechanism to access. Uh, well, in the first scenario, that will be the file system. So let's take you to the code. The first thing I will show you is, uh, is the VCL code. And uh, this is where all that happens. Now, uh, I'm not going to spoil the secret sauce just yet. So I'm going to uh, make sure this is not visible. So the VCL, for those who don't know, is our programming language that uh, is used to describe the behavior of Varnish. We import a bunch of modules of which edge stash, xbody, 
a cookie module, file system module, and also something we call the KV store, the key value store. Now, when something is not stored in cache, we need to access the backend, uh, our origin system that we're trying to offload. This uh, logic is defined here. But when we initialize our varnish configuration, we need to set up a couple of objects, one of which is the so-called key value store. And that's a piece of memory uh, that is accessible via a key and it can have a value. And that's the place where we'll store all the shopping cart information for our users. And the sessions object is actually an initialized file object that will access the slash sessions folder on disk. Now for the sake of this example, I've mounted the session information from the origin server, from the application server to Varnish. There are many scenarios in smaller environments where your web server will be on the same box as, uh, as Varnish. But in this case, I mounted it. So let's go into the first logic. Uh, I'm going to glance over this right now. We'll get back to it in the end. The first thing that happens is receiving a request. And when Varnish receives a request, the VCL will enter this stage. It's called VCL receive. The first thing we do is clear up all cookies. We don't need any cookies except the session ID cookie because all that tracking cookie stuff, we don't want it in there. Uh, it's, it's just garbage. So we, we uh, filter it out and we write it back. Whenever add to cart with a number or remove from cart and a number appears in the request URL, we decide not to cache. And that makes sense. Like if I go back here and I take it to varnish, as soon as I want to add something to cart, we need to make sure that the origin application knows of this, that, that this has been stored in, in, in the cart. However, we'll, we'll do some extra logic here as well. So whenever you add or remove something from the cart, we don't want to cache. In this case, the home page is cacheable. We do this by doing return hash, and the rest is just default behavior. Now, as soon as uh, the backend responds with an object or something that wasn't stored in cache or bypassed from the cache, this logic will be executed. First thing is adding to cart. Whenever we add something to the cart or remove something from the cart, we don't just get the response from the origin. We also explicitly refresh the cart. And this is the only place where that happens because what we're trying to do is limit the amount of file system access because that is taxing on the system. Imagine that you have tens of thousands of users coming to you at the same time. If for every request you need to access the disk, well, that will slow you down quite dramatically. So we're only doing it if changes occur. And when the page we receive is the home page, any potential headers that might disrupt our cacheability will we'll draw off right now, explicitly cache for an hour. That is allowed in VCL. And this is, you've seen this before, this is where we'll replace whatever is stored in the cart with the placeholder, items in cart, and we parse the response. And at delivery time, for some magical reason, which I'll explain you in just a second, cart.get contains for that specific session ID, for that specific session cookie, the number of items in cart. If that weren't the case, we'll default to zero. And then it's just a matter, here's the edge dash logic that I talked to you about earlier, we can add JSON data. And this parsed string, I'll, I, will, I will help you out a bit, would result in the following. So you would have a JSON object with a key called items in cart. And that would be an object that has, in this case, maybe the value, uh, value of four. And edge stash would take that value and would present four. Now the number four all depends on what was stored in the cart. Now, without any further ado, I think it's time to present the logic here. And as I've spoiled before, it's, it involves file system access. So in these lines, in these first four lines, we're trying to identify if there is a session. We do this based on the session cookie. If it turns out there is no session cookie, but the backend is trying to set a cookie, this means the session wasn't yet initialized. So depending on that, we either use the cookie stored in the browser or the cookie that was set by the server. Now, once we know the ID of the user, we can check on disk. Now, sessions is a file system object that looks in the slash sessions folder and looks for a file, a file that starts with ses underscore and then the session ID. If that file is found, we know we have a session file on disk. We read it, we store the value in here, and then we perform some regular expression magic where we look for the items in cart within that file and look for the numeric value. And we group this as group one. So in that items variable, we'll actually have the number of items in cart. And what we'll do in the end is we'll store it for the time being in local memory. That means if you refresh the page, we no longer need to access uh, the disk, but we have it in a local chunk of memory. And that's what makes this happen. So uh, if, I, if I access it here, if I refresh the page, let, let's try adding something to the cart here. 
we have two items in cart right now. When I refresh the page and I, will, I can prove this, my e-commerce solution doesn't get access, as you can see. What I, uh, what I can do is actually show you how Varnish behaves uh, internally. And I will filter, this is Varnish log. This is a tool we use for logging. I'll actually show you how internally Varnish deals with that. So if I refresh this page, you can see a whole lot of logging information. But the key here, if I escape this, is that the request was received. We tampered with the cookie. We've looked it up in cache and it was a hit. It was very much a cache hit. But then the logic at delivery time is we have the items in cart is two. We retrieve that from the file system and we store that in local memory and we're injecting that into JSON. So that happens at runtime. So long story short, when we refresh this, and even if you have shopping cart set up, you can have hundreds of thousands of people coming at the site at the same time, and we will present personalized cache without accessing the origin and without accessing the disk every single time. Now, there is a limitation to this. The problem with that is we rely on file system, which could prove slow, or if you have multiple varnish servers, well, all these pieces of, of, of disk need to be mounted. So it, it could turn out to be very complicated uh, after a while. What is a very common solution in, in various programming languages, in various frameworks, is using Redis. And Redis is a key value store. So it's basically uh, RAM memory over the wire. So you can connect to it remotely. And uh, this is exactly what I'm going to do right now. So instead of storing it individually on the disk, I will store it in the key value store which can have uh, significant benefits. And I would advise you, if you can, uh, to use it as such. So I'm bringing down my, uh, my Docker environment right now. And meanwhile, I'm going to change a couple of settings. So I'm going to change the way that uh, my PHP application stores its session information. I have this prepared, of course, to no longer do this in files, but to connect to another system that could store it in memory there, and that is distributable. If we would have many Varnish servers or many application servers, they would all connect to one or a cluster of Reddit servers that have the session information. So that has happened. What I will do now for the sake of convenience, and I've prepared this as well, instead of using the file system VCL and loading that one in my container, I will, uh, I will do it a different way and use Redis. Now, allow me to show the basic Redis information. All is the same. So I don't need to show you any of this. The only thing I need to show you is that in the refresh card subroutine that is called when stuff is added or removed from the, from the cart, instead of accessing the file system, I'm using a varnish module. This is an open source module uh, that can perform Redis call. So from within varnish, I'm actually directly connecting to Redis and getting the session ID information and getting that key. Now let's see if everything has spun up. So it has been taken down. Let's bring it back up with a new configuration. There we go. And what we can do now is uh, call Redis and see if there's any keys in there. And there's no keys at this point. Allow me to clear my screen, we'll make it easier. And now I will, I will go back to the page. There's no items in cache. I add an item and it's there. I can do keys, oh, Redis CLI, and I can check what keys are in there. And now we see a bunch of keys. And this one is interesting. This is my session information. So I can do get, I'm directly on that key value store right now. And we see items in cart one and Varnish can interact with that. That makes it really, really easy uh, to deal with. But this is not yet the final scenario. Uh, this is just a drop in replacement from file system to Redis, but we can do this in a more uh, efficient way. Allow me to present my next scenario. We're almost there. So what I will do now is I will stop using the basic example and do this on the fly. Meanwhile, I will change the way my Docker container handles it and go from basic Redis to on the fly Redis. So that means instead of uh, calculating it when the changes happen, we'll uh, do this on the fly uh, every time it is delivered. So I'm gonna bring it back up here. The environment is there. And I'll prove that that, it, that it's slightly different. So when I, when I change this, there's no information in our shopping cart. I'm adding this product. 
I'm adding another product, I need a second pair of shoes. So we have three items in the cart right now. What I can do by, by uh, calling the monitor key is I can monitor what happens inside Redis. So when I refresh this page, you can see that it's getting the session information. So every time I refresh, it does this on the fly. And it's time to show you the VCL on how I do this. That, that will make a lot more sense. So there is no more uh, subroutine to refresh the cart. We're past that. There are no triggers in here when changes occur to, to hook into that. Everything is done on the fly on delivery. And this is all done with these three little lines. We get the information, we use the session ID, we get the data back, we find items in cart, extract a numerical value and inject it here and done. Now this assumes that your Redis is fast enough to, to handle this. And in general, Redis is fast. Now make sure if you have hundreds of thousands of uh, people coming at the website at the same time to beef up your Redis cluster a bit so that it doesn't become your single point of failure. But in essence, all of this is computed again without accessing the origin and by doing this on the fly. Now again, you see that there's a little bit of ugly logic in here, but that's typically a limitation of the programming language I use, PHP. The final example, the last minutes I need, is a more advanced way of doing it. And I will talk about the VCL first before I show the implementation uh, live. Now, right now we've used a session ID, looking for some data that is hardly readable. Like again, if, if I take you here, this doesn't mean a whole lot, right? This is a lot of internal stuff. You need to use ugly regular expressions. There's a better way of approaching it. What if I would use lists? Now, interesting to know about Redis is that Redis has multiple data types. We've treated it all as a string up until now, but we can also use lists. So what that would mean is every time I click the add button, that product ID is added to the list. And then it's just a matter of calculating the list length to figure out what's going on. And I will show that in a more understandable way now. So again, we go to our e-commerce example. Uh, I hope it's all booted up. Yes. When we add stuff to the cart, it's all there. And now I can use Redis. I, you can see that uh, all this stuff has been put there. If I go to the Redis CLI, I can do check all the keys. And there is this key for my session. This is something I did customly. And if I do L range of that key of that list, and I start at zero and I list everything. And you can see that all these product IDs have been stored here. So instead of doing all that ugly find and replace, we've modified the application a bit. And then it's just a matter of doing LN of the key and boom, it's five. And that's a, a much more atomic way of doing things. So instead of having to do find and replaces, ugly regular expressions, it's just a matter of listing the list length. And every time a product gets added, it gets pushed onto the list every time uh, a product is removed from the cache, it gets pulled off the list. So that's an alternative way. Now, long story short, and we've reached the end here. Uh, let's, let's bring the final slide in for a second. Let's not save this. Uh, long story short is Varnish is more than a take it or leave it cache as I, as I tend to call it. Uh, like usually you either decide to cache or you don't. But as you can see, you can do a lot more logic on the edge and leverage the capabilities of Varnish and let Varnish do the, the stateful interaction. Now this doesn't work for all logic as long as it's compacted and you have a really fast way of accessing the data, Varnish can do that work for you and ensure that your origin is just left untouched and your hit rate is increased dramatically. 